I would love to have a conversation around why it is that we see this as a great tool for our clients and teams to use when they're bringing ideas to life and, and thinking about what they need to do in order to get them ready to, to know whether or not they should go to market with them. So would love to hear from you. And Erin, maybe you want to start with the why. Like why is this better? And why, why should teams reframe how they think about these things? Yeah, definitely. So we are at the Garage Group. We always take these startup inspired approaches. And one of them that I think is probably most pressing right now is just why we, why we borrow startup inspired approaches is because startups are tailor made to add value in times of uncertainty. And almost every single industry right now has been disrupted, not just because of COVID, but just because of changing behavior at the rate that it changes. And, and has been continually changing. You just can't get stuck with the consumer research results that you fielded last year or two years ago. They just frankly aren't relevant. And the people who are keeping a pulse on their consumers and the changing consumer behavior, identifying new opportunities to pivot your business model, those are all of the organizations that are surviving or potentially identifying new areas to expand their portfolio, launch new brands or products, and just continue to have a pulse on what's happening, staying relevant to whatever those emerging consumer needs are. So why this assumption-based development process has been so effective or this approach to de-risking ideas is because what it allows you to do is to start small, start with low fidelity of prototypes and build this mounting body of evidence over time. And the idea is, is that you can take a small nugget of an idea and go learn on it and then start to use iterative input from consumers to continue to build each of those ideas into something that could be really great and consumer resonant, all the while checking back in to make sure that you, not only were you clear of the problem at the beginning, but you're continually checking in to make sure that you're actually delivering value as you intended every step of the way. But I think that taking a step back and even thinking about what is the biggest hurdle to adoption in this way of working is just that it looks totally different than the traditional idea development process that exists in most big companies. You field a big consumer research study up front. The division of labor is pretty clear, functionally speaking. Marketing or innovation team takes it in-house, tries to figure out what do we have on the shelf from an R&D or product research development side of things, and try to go make something and then put it out in the market with a lot of folks who have bought into Eric Reese's lean startup methodology, everyone is jumping to let's go build and let's go do a test and learn. And while that's great, you've potentially wasted a ton of effort preparing for some big study and you just learn that it's not going to work. Whereas if you reframe your mindset, you start small, you think more about managing this portfolio of ideas together, you're able to allow each idea to set itself up for success as much as possible because the idea is what needs to be true for each of these ideas to have their best chance at success. And then so you almost put them in their own swim lanes and you build different experiment tracks for each idea. And I think Aaron, to your point, like we were talking, sorry, we were talking um, earlier. I think it allows you to really like put a stake in the ground for a lot of these ideas and say, how are we going to test in a bunch of different directions? all the while learning, right? Like it doesn't mean you can't borrow things from other ideas, but putting a stake in the ground from the beginning and starting to learn on distinct directions is the key in this. And I think that's, that's what we've seen the most success with doing instead of, you know, building, going with one idea and pushing it as far forward as you can, like at the same time, building really low cost experiments against six different ideas and learning quickly with low base sizes, with low fidelity. So you're able to understand the potential of a set of ideas versus just one moving one idea forward. 